If you're wondering which external SSDs for Mac are worth your money, stick around. After we run through each product, I'll give you my personal take. Would I buy it or would I skip it? No fluff, just my honest opinion. Let's get into it. SanDisk. Extreme Pro. This little beast is fast. Like blink and you missed it fast, with speeds up to 1050 megabytes per second, making file transfers a breeze. But for the price, you'd think they'd throw in a protective cap for that USB-C port. Instead, you're left playing dodge the dust with your expensive investment. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's great for speed demons, but the price and durability quirks make me hesitate. Silicon Power PX10. The PX10 is the budget-friendly hero with solid performance at 850 megabytes per second, but its aluminum shell gets hot enough to fry an egg during sustained transfers. Plus, no hardware encryption means your files are as secure as a diary with a broken lock. Would I buy it? Yes, it's cheap, fast enough for most tasks, and perfect if you don't mind carrying oven mitts. Samsung X5. The X5 is like a Ferrari. It's ridiculously fast at up to 2800 megabytes per second, but it only works with Thunderbolt 3 ports, so good luck if your Mac doesn't have one. Also, the dynamic thermal guard throttle speeds faster than you can say overheating, so don't expect consistent performance during heavy workloads. Would I buy it? No. It's too pricey and picky about ports. I'd rather buy something less high maintenance. Samsung T7. The T7 is sleek and secure with AES 256-bit encryption, but its dramless architecture means large transfers slow down faster than my internet during a storm. And no IP rating? You'd better keep this one away from coffee spills. Would I buy it? Yes, it's affordable and good for casual use. Just don't expect miracles during heavy-duty tasks. Crucial X10. Pro. The X10 Pro flexes its muscles with blazing speeds up to 2,000 megabytes per second in hardware encryption, but the price tag is absurd, 80% higher than its predecessor for essentially the same storage capacity. Also, no USB-A adapter included? That's like selling a car without tires. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's fast and tough, but unless you have USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 ports, you're paying extra for nothing. OWC Envoy Pro FX. This SSD feels like a tank durable, water-resistant, and fast as hell with speeds up to 2,800 megabytes per second, but it's also priced like one, making your wallet cry for mercy. Oh, and if you're stuck on USB instead of Thunderbolt, you're not getting anywhere near those speeds. So it's like owning a Ferrari but driving it in rush hour traffic. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's perfect for pros who need speed and durability, but the price tag is a hard pill to swallow. SanDisk Professional Pro G40 this drive is rugged enough to survive a zombie apocalypse and fast enough to transfer a 50 gigabyte file in 30 seconds, if you have Thunderbolt. But with no USB-A adapter or carry case included, SanDisk basically said, good luck to anyone not living in the future. Would I buy it? Yes. If you've got Thunderbolt and value speed over sanity, this one's a winner. Samsung T9. The Samsung T9 is sleek, fast, and feels luxurious until you realize it attracts dirt faster than a toddler with sticky hands. It's great for USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 users, but overpriced compared to rivals. So it's like buying designer jeans only to spill coffee on them immediately. Would I buy it? No. The price to performance ratio just doesn't make sense unless you really like shiny things. Lacy Rugged SSD Pro. This drive is the Chuck Norris of SSDs, IP67 rated, crush proof, and ready to handle your worst clumsy moments but its price tag might crush your soul instead. Plus, the lack of hardware encryption feels like a missed opportunity for something this pro. Would I buy it? Maybe. If you need extreme durability and speed for massive files, go for it, but only if someone else is paying. Western Digital P40. The P40 is fast, 2000 megabytes per second, compact, and even has RGB lighting because why not make your SSD look like a gaming rig? But beware, its write speeds drop off after five gigabytes of transfer so it's more sprint than marathon. Would I buy it? Yes. It's affordable, relatively, and stylish, just don't expect it to keep up with heavy workloads. Samsung T7. Shield. This rugged little beast is fast, hitting red and right speeds of up to 1,050 megabytes per second, and it's IP65 rated for dust and water resistance, perfect for the clumsy or adventurous types. But let's be honest, the rubberized exterior attracts dirt like a magnet, and the Android app is about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. Would I buy it? Yes, because speed and durability are worth a little extra cleaning. SanDisk Desk Drive. With a whopping 8 terabytes of storage and solid 10 gigabits per second performance, this is like having a data vault on your desk. The downside? It's desk bound with an external power brick. It's basically the couch potato of SSDs. Would I buy it? 
Uh, maybe, if you're okay with it being less portable than your grandma's rotary phone. Lexar SL660 Blaze. This flashy SSD comes with RGB lighting and shock resistance, making it look like it belongs in a gaming setup. However, its performance can tank during sustained write workloads, so it's more style than substance when handling big files. Would I buy it? No, because I need speed, not just pretty lights. SK Hynix Beetle X 31. Uh, compact, stylish in champagne gold, and capable of sustained speeds close to its advertised 1,000 megabytes per second. This SSD is like the James Bond of storage devices, but with only up to 2 terabytes available, it's not winning any awards for capacity. Would I buy it? Maybe, if you value sleek design and reliability over sheer storage space. UD, my passport SSD. Sleek and portable with hardware encryption and a 5-year warranty. This drive is like the Swiss army knife of SSDs. Unfortunately, it lacks an activity light and gets uncomfortably warm during heavy use. So maybe don't cuddle with it. Would I buy it? Yes, because compact size and security are hard to pass up. A Data Elite SE 880. This SSD is like a sprinter, blazing fast with red speeds up to 2062 megabytes per second, but it overheats faster than your laptop during a summer heat wave, throttling performance for large files over 32 gigabytes. Plus, no hardware encryption means your sensitive files are about as secure as a diary with a broken lock. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's great for speed junkies with compatible USB ports, but the overheating and lack of encryption make me hesitate. WD Black D50 Game. Doc, this SSD isn't just storage, it's a full-on gaming hub with ports galore, RGB lighting, and red speeds over 3,000 megabytes per second. But let's be real, at this price, it's not just expensive. It's like buying a sports car to park in your garage because you don't have HDMI or SD card slots to take it for a spin. Would I buy it? Yes. If you're gaming on a Thunderbolt 3 laptop and want to flex your setup, this is the king of docks. Kingston XS1000. This SSD is compact enough to fit in your pocket and offers decent speeds of up to 1050 megabytes per second, but it lacks rugged features and hardware encryption, making it about as durable as a wet tissue in a storm. Also, it slows down significantly when transferring large files over 150 gigabytes. Perfect if you love watching progress bars crawl. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's affordable and portable, but don't expect miracles when handling big data. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you pick the external SSDs for Mac for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description.